Okay, let's check this out. I'm just working with Cinema 4D, and I've got a render here. It's uh, <clears throat> finishing up. It's been uh, taking quite a while. We're up to uh, three three hours or so. And what I've got is some text, um, very nicely formatted. Some rings going around with a background, and getting some very nice reflections. Um, I got some uh, planes stretched out and real thin with a luminant channel uh, material added and you're picking those up here in the reflections um, down here a little bit but right up here this is really nice I love the way the three um, and I'll show you in just a minute in the project I love the way the three of these are in the curvature of the rings they're coming together to almost form one line but then they're splitting up as the curvature gets bigger so uh, I really like the way that looks um, let's go ahead and look at the project now and here we go this is the um, project and these are the three planes what I did is I just created a plane, I made it real thin and stretched it out added a luminant material um, unchecked my color, my specular just used luminance and cranked it up to about 145 and placed that on the three planes then I placed the planes into a null so that I can easily move them around and I've got them angled a little bit um, set back just a little bit I also have um, if you look at it from this angle you get kind of a blue feel and if I look at it from this angle you kind of get a little bit of a orange feel and uh, what I did there was I have two lights and one of those lights is an orangish color about 42 percent intensity and blue with the same 42 percent and uh, in the final render um, that comes out looking nice now the one that's rendering right now is slightly different to this I have made some changes um, to it and I've been just just playing around here um, and I was actually wanting to get a different angle for a different render and uh, so let's go ahead and let's walk through this I'm gonna create a new project um, the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna make a cube make it thinner but much larger and if you didn't know these little squares you can use to drag your shapes and make them bigger or smaller, resize them. Um, I'm going to add a MoGraph MoText object and we'll move that out in front of the cube and I'm gonna take this and go to the object settings and I'm gonna crank up the uh, depth which will make the text extruded more and what I want to do is make it so it's pushing into the background a little bit but we can always do that at the end I'm going to create a null object now I have added the null to a button here and if you don't have it uh, already out here you can find it by going to your primitives and adding a null object there so um, what I want to do is drop my MoText into the null and I'm gonna just write something um, okay and let's see uh, this text is fine for the purposes I do want to change my horizontal spacing a little bit 
just kind of crunch the tracking in on those letters, which horizontal spacing is basically the equivalent of tracking to a certain degree. Um, what I did is I actually have three different text objects making up the text that you saw there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate one of these and I'm going to go to caps and add a fillet cap to the front and back and I'm gonna leave it at five for a second I'm gonna grab this piece of text and I'm gonna move it to the back and when I add the caps as long as I don't use the constrain button you can see that it kind of oversizes my other piece of text and you can kind of achieve this effect using the uh, one step and two step but I like using this technique um, for text sometimes so that's what I'm gonna do here and I'm gonna scoot it way to the back and I just want this to be kind of a border around my text so something like that and I'm actually gonna take this one and scoot it back a little bit too and then I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'm going to keep it the same except the depth I'm going to change to maybe 20 <clears throat> and I want that to be in my null as well and I'm going to bring this one out in front and I want to look at my side view of this piece so using my uh, view buttons here I'm going to zoom in and I want this so close that it's almost touching but I don't want it touching and you can see there is a tiny bit of gap um, the reason is I don't want to get wonky stuff uh, with my materials um, if they're overlapping sometimes if two polygons share the same space you'll get some some mixed results so what I have is I've got my text in the front, my text in the back, and my text in the middle. I'm just going to rearrange these um, in the order so that I know this is the front, this is the middle, this is the back. So let's go ahead and create some materials now. And I'm just going to start with a background material for my cube. And I just want an off-white, um, very slightly uh, reflective material. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit over to the yellow, go a little bit darker value, and that is fine. And actually, yeah, I was in my luminance. I need to go to my color. So, common mistake. It remembers where you were last, and I was playing with some luminance. So, I just kind of want a creamy creamy white that'll be fine I'm not real real picky about it I am gonna add my reflection I'm going to turn the reflection way down just a couple percent um, and I'm going to call this BG for background and there we go and I'm also going to duplicate this. I'm going to grab it and hold down control before I let go. And this one, I want to take the reflection and crank it way up. Um, I'm also going to go to my specular and bring my height way up and my width down. And this one, I'm going to drop on my middle piece of text. Okay, one more material. Double click down here, my material editor. And I want to make a, uh, an almost black color. So I'm going to click on black here just to get close. And uh, I'm going to go a little lighter on the value. Um, just because it's better to have it 
have a little bit of gray in it. Um, solid black is really, really difficult. So uh, I'm going to add reflection, and I'm going to. I want the reflection to be very similar to my white material. I am going to bring the uh, brightness of that down a little bit, and I'm going to go to my specular and same thing. I really want a sharp specular um, with very little. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take and drag that to my back text piece. So you see I'm layering these here. Now I am going to take my front text piece and I want to drop this down to maybe 15. And I might have to move it again. So um, just using my side view here. Oh, well, that's okay. I can do that. Zoom way in. And there we go. They're very, very, very close, but not touching. Okay, and my last material that I need is a transparent glass type material. So I'm going to go to transparency and click on that. I am going to go to my specular. I'm going to crank up my height and drop my width, but not quite as much on this, um, on this glass texture. I am going to go to my transparency settings in my f refraction. I want more like 1.8. Um, refraction changes the way things look when you're looking through the glass. So if you look at this background, there's straight diagonal lines, but then when you look through the glassy texture, they're kind of curved and bent, and that is your refraction. Refraction uh, is what happens when light passes through glass. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drop it on my front material. Okay. Um, I am going kind of fast, but uh, can always go back and watch parts again if you need to. Um, I'm going to kind of set up the way I want this to look. And then I'm going to drop a camera in the scene. And the reason why I did that is because I want to back off and work on my lighting. And I want to be able to switch from my this view to this view quickly. So, all right, let's bring out some planes. Um, I'm going to change the orientation to negative Z. And I'm going to move it out a little bit. And I'm going to use these sizing handles. Now you'll notice the geometry. I've got lots and lots of polygons here. I'm going to fix that in just a second, but I want to get it roughly the shape I want. In the width segments, I want to go to 1. In the height segments, 1. Um, I don't need all that extra geometry. And I'm just going to duplicate this a couple times. So I'm going to click and drag, hold control, drop. Click, drag, hold control, drop. So now I have my three. Um, the one on the bottom, I'm just going to move it a little bit. And the one on the top, move it up a little bit. Just so I'm getting those three, uh, those three things there. I'm going to shift, uh, click on the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one, right click, and go to group objects. That will put them in a null. And uh, I'm going to take that null. And I just want to kind of rotate it a little bit. So that's good. And I'm going to move it a little better. A little, I want it to get a nice bright reflection. Now I need to add a compositing tag. So I'm going to go to Tags, Cinema 4D, Compositing. I'm going to uncheck Scene by Camera. I'm also going to double click this stoplight here so it's red, so I'm not seeing it in my render. I'm then going to just go here, and I just want to do a quick render region. Now this might take a minute. We will see. Ah, I don't have my global illumination and all that set up yet, so this is not going to look nearly as pretty as we want. Um, one thing I noticed 
on my front text, I want to add um, a fillet cap to the front so that my glassy texture has a little bit of a beveled edge. But what I want to do is use constrain so the size of the text does not get bigger. So you can see here I've got this beveled edge, but it's the, still the same size as the text. So that's what I want. And what's going to happen with that is it's just going to create some uh, some really nice reflections. Now I'm not going to go over the rings. Um, what I did with those was I used a uh, sweep nerves with two circle splines and then I just scaled them down and I put the same real glossy black texture on them. Um, but I am going to go into my lighting a little bit and how I lit this scene. So let's go back out into this camera and I want to add a couple area lights and I'm going to bring this out I'm going to kind of resize my area light I'm actually not real sure what happens when you resize an area light I'm hoping that um, I would imagine the reflection changes so and just kind of drag that out and I want it coming from this angle now see how you can see the Z arrow showing you what direction the Z axis is in what I want to do is I want to rotate it because so, that arrow is going to kind of point where my lights gonna go and I kind of want it coming from the side like this yeah. well, so there we go and What we're going to do is just go add another area light. And I'm just going to rotate that so my blue arrow is kind of pointing where I want the light to be going. Now one of these I'm going to set up to cast shadows, um, but that's uh, that's pretty good there. I am going to click on my light and go into the general settings, and I had my percent down to about 42. Um, you know, I I'm getting I'm going to turn on global illumination, so I'm getting light from my luminant channel, um, which I do need to add to my planes um, that I set up. But, uh, you know, I, I really don't want a whole lot of light here. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go to like a 35%. And I'm going to change it to a warmer color. Um, now I tried it with just a hint of orange. And then I ended up boosting that up. Um, so uh, that there. And then the other light, I'm going to change that to a cooler color so I want to bring it over into the blue and I'm going to drop that intensity down to 35 percent as well so now you see I'm getting a little bit of a blue cast over here and an orange cast over here and um, I just like the way that looks I like that it you get reflections that are a little bluer over here and a little warmer over there so all right, um, go into my camera real quick. Good. I need to add a material and make a material for my luminance. So this is real easy. Double click to make a new material. Double click to open it up. I'm going to click on my luminance, check the box, uncheck color, uncheck specular. And I want to just crank this up. Um, I'm going to go around 150 or so. It, the that doesn't have to be exact. Now I need to see I think I can just drop that on the null and all three, yes. Um, I just dropped it on the null and all three of the planes on the inside get that, so that's good. I am going to go into my render settings and I am going to add the effect global illumination. Um, now when I did this render I turned these up to high 
Um, what I'm going to do for this though is I'm just going to lower the settings just for this tutorial sake. Um, I also in the final render I added ambient occlusion. Um, I'm not going to add that for the um, for this here but just know that uh, ambient occlusion just really helps with your shadows and such. Um, my anti-aliasing on the f the final render as well I cranked up to 2x2 two two and 4x4 four four. so um, right now it is at best 1x1 one one and 4x4 four four. so I'm gonna leave that all there I am going to go in to one of my lights and I want my blue light to cast shadows so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say area shadows and um, that's going to give me a little bit of shadowing coming from this direction so let's take a peek um, I want to kind of angle my camera a little bit just so I'm getting a little bit different reflections and mostly because of that transparent uh, material that I've got on there so I'm gonna give a, a quick uh, render and I'm gonna pause the the screen capture for while that renders because um, I'm rendering something in the background and it would take forever you guys don't want to watch that so I'll be right back okay so um, I just rendered out a short region here just wanted to get a a peek at what my colors uh, my different materials were looking like um, get a general idea of what my reflections were doing um, and this is what we got I might back these planes off a little bit so come out of that camera grab my null object and just uh, backing them off um, a little bit But otherwise, that looked uh, pretty good. And just render out a quick, quick little spot of this. Okay, so you can see here um, we're starting to get a little bit of that rendered out. In the meantime, I'm going to take a peek at the other render that's working. Um, again, I really like the soft lighting. Um, the light is not real bright. It's not overpowering. Um, I really love the way these reflections are turning out over here. I really think if you're going to have shiny reflective stuff, you need to have it reflecting something cool. Um, you know, it's not going to have good reflections if you don't have something good for it to reflect I guess is you know the the main idea behind that um, and I really like the three planes here rather than just using one simple plane to show a reflection um, pretty soon I might even set up uh, a cloner with some disk polygon uh, primitive objects and just kind of have those randomly um, kind of back in the distance away from the camera so that uh, they will reflect as like some dots maybe something um, using a sky object with an HDR file attached to that in the material is a good a good way to go um, but you're just you're not you're gonna get garbage for reflections if you don't have something cool to reflect in it so um, I really like also the way this just the re between the refraction and this bevel and everything else it's really breaking up these lines so they're uh, they're kinda not just lines you know it's it's breaking them up into different shapes and stuff so 